The Book of Proverbs Chapter 24, Rightly Divided, Bible Study, Proverbs 24 verses 1 to 30 For be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Through wisdom is an house builded, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. Wisdom is too high for a fool, he openeth not his mouth in the gate. He that devi saith to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous, spoil not his resting place, for a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked, for there shall be no reward to the evil man, the candle of the wicked shall be put out. My son, fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change, for their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both? These things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him, but to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. Say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. I went by the field of the slothful, and by the vineyard of the man void of understanding, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well, I looked upon it and received instruction. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. Opening sentence. Proverbs 24 verses 1 to 2 Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire to be with them. For their heart studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. Evil men endeavor to violently take away the houses of righteous men by murdering them. Then they spend their days filling those houses with stolen goods. Micah 2 verse 2 And they covet fields, and take them by violence, and houses, and take them away. So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Proverbs 1 verses 11 to 13 If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause, let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole, as those that go down into the pit, we shall find all precious substance, we shall fill our houses with spoil. The house of wisdom, a righteous man will not envy the prosperity of the wicked, nor desire to be with them in fellowship, but through the wisdom of God he will fill his house with treasures from God's word. Proverbs 24 verses 3 to 4 through wisdom is in house builded, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wisdom is building according to the blueprint of God's word, but the strange woman is building a counterfeit house, Proverbs 7 verse 8, and 9 colon 14 dash 18. Her house is filled with dainties to tempt men's fleshly appetites, but her house is the way to hell, 727, 9 18. Chapter 24 contrasts these two houses as God continues to instruct Israel about making right choices. Finding the theme, what house will ye build me? The repetition of particular words and phrases in this chapter reveal the theme, house, dwelling, resting place, and chambers. The wise man is contrasted with the evil, mischievous man. Israel needed to trust in God's word in order to discern between good and evil, and the choices he made would bring their just rewards. A strong house. Proverbs 24 verses 5 to 6 A wise man is strong, yeah, a man of knowledge increaseth strength. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war, and in multitude of counselors there is safety. The word of God is the counsel that makes a man wise and strengthens the house of his inner man. The phrase, the war, while possibly referring to a physical war, 
is certainly referring to the continuous spiritual war against evil which daily takes place in the inner man. Jesus spoke to his disciples about seeking counsel for the choices they faced, using war as an example. Luke 14 verses 31 to 33, Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth, whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand. Or else, while the other is yet a great way off, he sendeth an ambassage, and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. The point Jesus was making in Luke chapter 14, is that his followers must choose to forsake everything in order to faithfully follow him, especially in light of the coming tribulation. They must be willing to lose their own lives for his sake, Luke 17 verse 33. Eternal safety would be theirs only by knowing the will of God and choosing to walk in it. And high tower, Proverbs 24 verse 7 Wisdom is too high for a fool, he openeth not his mouth in the gate. This reference to gate regards judgment. A fool lacks God's wisdom and therefore he cannot judge. A wise son is expected to exercise righteous judgment according to God's word. Deuteronomy 16 verse 18 Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Evil Surmisings Proverbs 24 verses 8 to 9 He that deviseth to do evil shall be called a mischievous person. The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is an abomination to men. Instead of seeking wise counsel from God's word, the evil man behaves according to the wicked thoughts and schemes that arise from his own corrupted thinking. Right choices if Proverbs 24 verses 10 to 12 If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. If thou forbear to deliver them that are drawn unto death, and those that are ready to be slain, if thou sayest, Behold, we knew it not, doth not he that pondereth the heart consider it? And he that keepeth thy soul, doth not he know it? And shall not he render to every man according to his works? Strength comes from the wisdom of God's word. If the rulers of Israel did not store the word of God in the chamber of their inner men, they would certainly faint on the day of adversity. The law of Moses gave the rulers of Israel authority to deliver righteous men from unjust death, and they were expected to use that authority. An example of Israel's failure to attend unto death, and they were expected to use that authority. An example of Israel's failure to attend to this responsibility is found in the Gospels. John the Baptist was unjustly imprisoned and allowed to be put to death, and the religious rulers of Israel did nothing to stop it. The rulers in Israel also paid Judas to betray Jesus into their hands, and they delivered him to be put to death. God shall certainly render to those men according to their works. Choose the good. Proverbs 24 verses 13 to 14 My son, eat thou honey, because it is good, and the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. God is reminding Israel about the source of all goodness and profitability that is found in his word. God's word, which is compared to honey and the honeycomb, is the basis for the rewards that the son will receive when he judges righteously. Psalm 119 verse 103 How sweet! are thy words unto my taste. Yeah, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Proverbs 16 verse 20 For pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. The dwelling of the righteous. Proverbs 24 verses 15 to 16 Lay not wait, O wicked man, against the dwelling of the righteous, spoil not his resting place, for a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. The resting place of the righteous is in the presence of the Lord. The righteous man places his trust in the word that God has spoken to him. God promised the nation of Israel a particular rest, and through much labor they will enter into the rest, if they continue to trust in his word. Hebrews 4 verse 11 Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. During the great tribulation, Israel will experience many trials of their faith which tempt them to fall seven times, Seven seals, Revelation 5 verse 5, seven trumpets, Revelation 8 verse 2, and seven plagues, Revelation 15 verse 1. Only by trusting in God's word can they endure unto the end. Matthew 10 verse 22, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Thine enemy. Proverbs 24 verses 17 to 18 Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Israel's enemies are the members of their own house, their brethren and their kindred. This theme is found throughout the Old Testament and in Jesus' teaching. Micah 7 verse 6 For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, 
the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies are the men of his own house. Mark 13 verse 12 Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. God warns Israel against rejoicing when their enemies fall. God takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, therefore no one should. Ezekiel 33 verse 11 Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will ye die, O house of Israel? Just rewards. Proverbs 24 verses 19 to 20 Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked, for there shall be no reward to the evil men, the candle of the wicked shall be put out. God cautions Israel against envying the wicked again, as he did in verse 1. God also reminds them that he will punish the evil men. The candle of the wicked is a reference to the inner men. Proverbs 20 verse 27 The spirit of men is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. In comparison, the wicked city in the book of Revelation will have its candle put out. Revelation 18 verse 23 And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Given to change. Proverbs 24 verses 21 to 20 to my son, Fear thou the Lord and the King, and meddle not with them that are given to change, for their calamity shall rise suddenly, and who knoweth the ruin of them both. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9 verse 10. If a man fears the Lord, he will reverence his word. The king gets his authority from the word of God, and therefore, the king should also be feared. The kings of nations or authorities, should also be respected according to Romans 13 and 1 Timothy 2 verses 1 to 2. Throughout scripture, them that are given to change are those in authority who do not fear the Lord and are not afraid to change his word into a lie. Both those who change his words and those who follow their lies will come to ruin. The treasure of the wise, Proverbs 24 verses 23 to 26 these things also belong to the wise. It is not good to have respect of persons in judgment. He that saith unto the wicked, Thou art righteous, him shall the people curse, nations shall abhor him, but to them that rebuke him shall be delight, and a good blessing shall come upon them. Every man shall kiss his lips that giveth a right answer. These verses are particularly addressed to the king, and the rulers of the nation of Israel, for they alone had the authority to pronounce judgment upon men. Other nations are beholding the judgments of the king of Israel. When the king of Israel judged righteously, the people of Israel and the surrounding nations were both blessed. To kiss his lips that giveth a right answer, is to submit to the judgment being pronounced. In Psalms 2, all kings and judges are to submit to the Son of God with a kiss. Psalm 2 verses 10 to 12 Be wise now therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. The field first. Proverbs 24 verse 27 Prepare thy work without, and make it fit for thyself in the field, and afterwards build thine house. This is so particular to the nation of Israel during the tribulation, as confirmed by prophecy, Isaiah 66 verse 1, Acts 7 verse 49. Even today unbelieving Israel is planning to build a house, a temple, supposedly for God. They vainly imagine that they are doing God's will, but because they do not believe the word of God, they are actually building a house for the coming Antichrist. Jesus Christ will return and build the house after he first makes the vineyard, the nation of Israel, and the field, the world, fit to receive him. Do not recompense evil. Proverbs 24 verses 28 to 29, Be not a witness against thy neighbor without cause, and deceive not with thy lips. Say not, I will do so to him as he hath done to me. I will render to the man according to his work. Proverbs 20 verse 22 Say not thou, I will recompense evil, but wait on the Lord, and he shall save thee. Proverbs 3 verse 30 Strive not with a man without cause, if he have done thee no harm. Israel had enemies among the surrounding nations who hated them for no reason, other than jealousy over their exalted position. God had chosen Israel to be above all the nations of the earth, Deuteronomy 14 verse 2. Those nations who were especially jealous over Israel were the descendants of Abraham. Abraham had eight sons, but God chose to make his covenant with Isaac instead of his firstborn son, Ishmael. Isaac had two sons, but God chose to make his covenant with Jacob instead of Esau. This jealousy of Israel's exalted position is called, the old hatred, and the perpetual hatred, Ezekiel 25 verse 15, and 35 colon 5. Conclusion, Spiritual Poverty. Proverbs 24 verses 30 to 34 I went by the field of the slothful, 
and by the vineyard of the men void of understanding, and, lo, it was all grown over with thorns, and nettles had covered the face thereof, and the stone wall thereof was broken down. Then I saw and considered it well, I looked upon it and received instruction, yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. The vineyard is the land of Israel. Israel's rulers, the prophets, priests and kings, neglected the charge that God gave them to shepherd the people of God. Instead they made themselves rich and built their own houses. Isaiah 3 verse 14 The Lord will enter into judgment with the ancients of his people, and the princes thereof, for ye have eaten up the vineyard, the spoil of the poor is in your houses. Isaiah 56 verses 10 to 11 His watchmen are blind, they are all ignorant, they are all dumb dogs, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yeah, they are greedy dogs which can never have enough, and they are shepherds that cannot understand. They all look to their own way, every one for his gain, from his quarter. Instead of reaping the blessings of obedience, Israel reaped the curses of poverty, both spiritual and physical Deuteronomy 28 verses 16 to 18, 38 to 40, Psalms 106 verse 15, because of their rejection of the word of God. The further a traveler or a soldier gets from home, the more his resources are depleted. The further away men get from the word of God, the more spiritually impoverished he becomes. Summary, God desired to build the house of Israel and fill it with the treasure of his word. Jerusalem would be his city on a hill, and a light that would shine the glory of God unto the entire world. God gave Israel the treasure of his word in the law of Moses. If they would obey his word, they would not only be blessed, but the entire world would be blessed through them. Because of their envy towards the gods of the surrounding nations, Israel fell from their exalted position. They broke his covenant and committed adultery, worshipping devils instead of God. Dispensational Consideration The house that God is building today is the church which is his body, Colossians 1 verses 18, and 24, not according to the law of Moses, but according to the dispensation of the grace of God which was revealed to the Apostle Paul. Romans 11 verse 13 For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the Apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 For we are laborers together with God, ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building. Colossians 1 verse 25 Whereof I am made a minister, according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, to fulfill the word of God. Life Application The goal for a believer living in this present dispensation is, 1, to learn the doctrine revealed to the Apostle Paul in his letters Romans through Philemon, and 2, to apply them directly to their lives. By doing so believers will be built up and strengthened in their inner men, Ephesians 3 verse 16, and grow up into Christ, Ephesians 4 verse 15. By learning the sound words, 2 Timothy 1 verse 13, that pertain to Paul's sound doctrine, Titus 2 verse 1, believers will be built up and become sound in their faith, Titus 1 verse 13, 2 colon 2. End of section 2. Chapter 25 begins section 3, Proverbs chapters 25 to 29. Proverbs 25 verse 1 These are also Proverbs of Solomon, which the men of Hezekiah king of Judah copied out. Proverbs chapter 24 Homework Envy versus Jealousy The word envy is found four times in the book of Proverbs, Envious is found two times. Jealousy is only found once. By searching for these words and studying how they are used throughout the scriptures, you can determine their different meanings. Envy is a sin that always leads to more sin. Jealousy is not a sin because God is jealous, Exodus 20 verse 5, 34 verse 14, etc. Concordance search, find all the references to every form of the word mischief. It occurs in Psalms and Proverbs more than any other books of the Bible. Read through a few references to help you understand how sinful it is to be mischievous, and to get a biblical definition for the word. Compare this with the definition given in a Webster's 1828 dictionary. Concordance search, find the word chambers in a King James Bible. The oldest reference is found in the book of Job, where it refers to a place in the heavens. Psalms 104 uses it in a similar manner. The first chronological mention of chambers is found in 1 Kings, referring to the construction of the first temple by King Solomon. The book of Ezekiel has the most references. Ezekiel 8 verse 12 refers to the chambers of a person's mind. Study through the verses as you have time in order to establish a biblical understanding of the word. Concordance search, Find the words gate and sat as used together in a King James Bible. By studying these references, 
you will learn that the gate of the city was the place where the judges, rulers, kings and elders met publicly to mete out judgment in cases that were brought before them. The expectation, read and consider the following references to God's plan for rewarding the righteous and the wicked. There is an end goal in God's plan. The word expectation is found five times in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 10 verse 28, 11 verse 7, and 11.23 equate expectation to hope and desire. Proverbs 23 verse 18 speaks of an expected end for the nation of Israel, and Proverbs 24 verse 14 speaks of a reward. Jeremiah records God's end goal for the nation of Israel. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, set the Lord, thoughts of peace, and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Them that are given to change, Read and study the context of the following references of the men who were given to change. Genesis 31 verse 7 Laban changed Jacob's wages ten times. Psalms 106 verse 20 Israel changed God's glory for a golden calf. Isaiah 24 verse 5 The inhabitants of the earth changed God's law. Jeremiah 2 verse 11 Israel changed God's glory for the gods of other nations. Ezekiel 5 verse 6 The city of Jerusalem changed God's statutes by refusing to obey. Daniel 7 verse 25 The coming Antichrist will change times and laws. Romans 1 verse 25 Men changed the truth of God into a lie and worship the creature. Concordance search Find the word kiss in a King James Bible. As you have time read through all the references, the word kiss often implies submission. Also notice the words that are sometimes repeated and associated with the word kiss. For example, the words kiss and bless are found together four times, embrace three times, wept or weep nine times, with anoint two times, and with bow or obeisance five times. In addition, read Psalms 2 about Jesus' second coming to the earth as the judge. Men are instructed to kiss the Son, meaning, to submit to Him. A resting place, consider the following verses in context to understand that a place of rest is associated with the presence of God. Exodus 33 verse 14, Numbers 10 33, 2 Chronicles 6 verse 41, Isaiah 32 verse 18, Revelation 21 verse 23, and 22 colon 5. Highlight. By using Blue Letter Bible, you will find the phrase, without cause, 13 times. Also search for the phrase, without a cause, which occurs 8 times. Read through these verses and highlight these phrases. Consider studying the context of these verses as time allows, or as you read through the books of the Bible where this phrase is found. Poverty. The first time the word poverty is used is in Genesis 45 verse 11, and it is associated with famine. The word poverty is found only 15 times in a King James Bible and 11 of those are found in the book of Proverbs. If you carefully consider the full context of each use of the word in the book of Proverbs, you will find that it is in reference to the spiritual poverty that comes upon a man due to the rejection of the word of God.